Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. All right, so this is what we're doing today. I've already created this. So I wanna show you what it looks like in, in Design Space when it's done, right? So it's this, and this is what it looks like in person. So it's a shaker. I don't know if you can see, the clouds have sequins in them, and this is what it looks like. So you can kind of have a reference of my face and the cake topper. Um, it's not on a stick yet because I'm waiting for Amazon to deliver. <laughs> so, all right. So this is what, I mean, it's so cute. I love it. I love anything rainbow. I like anything bright and colorful. I think it's great for kids. Um, and this is a great theme because it's so easy to do so many different things to make it look so cute. I know. So, 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 but, um, it's a really easy theme to do for birthdays. So, all right, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna go into Inkscape, we're gonna go into Creative Fabrica, because I wanted to tell you, so let me pull that up right now. Um, I am an affiliate with Creative Fabrica, and I, I truly do love them. I, I try um, try to stick, stay true to things that I create and what I like and don't like, and I try to make that clear to you guys. So hopefully, you know, you're good with it. So anyway, this file is only 10 cents. Um, I love it because, you know, it's just, you need another place to get your images because if you're going to do an offset in Inkscape, you can't pull these images from Design Space, at least not easily. I mean, there is a workaround, but I don't necessarily want to screen print, change it, try to change it to an SVG, try to put it into Inkscape. Uh, you know, our projects are, hard enough. So I have another source, which is Creative Fabrica, to get my images um, just so that I can create offsets in Inkscape. So I can download this and upload into Inkscape because you can't get your images out of design space, if that makes sense. The other thing I like about Creative Fabrica is just the millions of fonts that you have, and you don't need to keep track of them because they have their own um, uh, font uh, manager. It's called, um, let me move it over. It is called Font Cloud. The other thing that I like about it is because all the fonts come with commercial use. So you don't need to keep track of which, did you get that from Defont? Does it come with a license? All of these fonts you can use um, on your products and sell. I know, I know. Uh, it's a lot of selling, but I truly do love this site. Um, the other thing is if you subscribe to the site, um, I have a membership code for you. It is the Useless Crafter 30 for 30% 30 off. So it's super cool that way um, and affordable. All right, so download this image because that's, that's the image that I use. And I've done rainbow stuff before in, and just used the design space one. But like I said, you can't create an offset. And um, if you follow me on Instagram, the useless crafter without any spaces, um, you'll see that an offset really changes your project. It makes it look more professional. Uh, it creates that depth. It really does tie it all together. All right, so you download, like I said, it's a July promo. I think it's 10 cents right now. Um, okay, so let's go into Inkscape. Inkscape is free. You need to download it. I'm going to show you how to create the offset. It's literally the only thing I do in Inkscape because it's the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> so, all right. So you're going to go to file and you're going to import because we've already downloaded that um, the rainbow, right? So here's my rainbow. Okay. So very similar to design space. They have a lock button. This right now is unlocked. So we want to lock it because we want to make it big. I, it's so much easier when you can see things big, right? Okay. Now, we want to create um, an offset for the whole thing. So, sorry, I was looking at the cake topper. Um, what you want to do is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because it's right where my record buttons are. So you can't see it. Sorry. Give me a second. Okay. So here we are. Um, so right now this image is selected, right? So take your arrow, just click in the empty white space so that nothing's selected. We're going to go to the paint bucket, pick any color. This is just to create the offset. We will change this in design space. You can figure out the cardstock, the color scheme, whatever. Okay. Then you want to go to grow or shrink by, and we're going to do 20. I don't remember what I did originally. I think I did 20 and 40, but so grow by 20. We're basically growing this by 20. So click on the cloud. So the cloud got bigger. Click on this cloud and 
we're going to do this. Originally, I didn't do all of that. I don't think it really matters. I'm, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we got this. Let's click on the arrow. Click in the white space so that we're not selecting anything. Click on the paintbrush again. Click on a different color. And this time we're gonna go up by 40. And so let's click on this. This time everything's connected as one thing, as one color. So it gave us that easy offset, right? Let's go hit the arrow key, click on the white space, click on the paint bucket, click on a different color, and let's click on that. Oh, change this to 60 now. And I like to do 20, 40, 60, or if you want to do it thinner, 10, 20, 30. <laughs> I like to do three, even if you don't end up doing three. Even if you end up doing just two, you have it so that you're done in Inkscape. You can do whatever you want in Design Space, okay? So let's click on this. Done. Okay, so now click on the arrow key and grab all of this. Okay, so you can see all the different layers. It's grabbing all the different colors, all the different layers. Go to Path, Object to Path, and then File, Save As. And I'm going to save this as Rainbow Offset Demo because I've already done it one time. Okay. So now we're done in Inkscape. That was it. I mean, it, that was pretty simple, right? Um, okay, so let's go into Design Space. And I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, and you have to find your rainbow, right? Find the one that you just saved. So, so it was the demo, Rainbow Offset Demo. Okay, here it is, click Save. And let's in, um, insert that image. And you're also going to want to do that with your number. Now, I didn't do the number in there because you I showed you how to do the rainbow, so you would do the same thing with the number. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see. All right, you want to ungroup this, and let's just move all our different... So there's that one, and then there's our... So let's bring that to the front, arrange, send to the front so that it'll sit on top so you can see the offset. Right. Okay. This pink one was separated, remember, because of all the different rainbow colors. So what I like to do is use the right hand side panel and I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to select everything that's the pink. OK, hit the shift key, click the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Um, and this as well. I think I want that one. Um, OK, and then <laughs> weld. So it's all together. Okay, and that goes on top like that. And then you have this. Um, actually, sorry, I'm gonna undo that for a second because I want, I'm gonna duplicate these clouds. Let's duplicate that. I forgot I needed to do something. Okay, so besides those two, let's grab this and this and all our rainbow shapes here to weld them. All right, so here's our top layer. So this is your offset. If you look at my the one that I did, I only did two layers. I did the, the original rainbow, and then I did one layer right there and another layer there. So I did not do the, ten, the 20, 40, 60. I probably did just 20 and 40, okay? So I'm gonna stick to that original. And the reason is if you decided to do it, you don't wanna have to go back into Inkscape to get that extra layer. So that's why I do three, just to give us that option. So I'm gonna delete this one to keep it similar to what we had, okay? Um, so here are our clouds. So let's ungroup this. Let's grab this cloud. And the reason why I duplicated the, the pink cloud is because I want to slice out so that I have a border and I have a shaker. So what you're gonna do is you're going to grab these two items, go to arrange, or I'm sorry, align. Align and center it. So it centers it automatically for you. And then let's slice these two things. So what you end up having is you have this. This is the outline of my cloud. And give me just one second. 
Should I be happy that my five-year-old asked me for a candy snack? She asked for permission. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So here is our outline, right? So if you could see, that goes on top, okay? So this year, I'm going to undo something because I should have made copies. So let's undo that for a second. Undo the slice. Okay. All right. So we have our clouds. This is the other thing. You should always make copies so that you don't have to undo like I just did. So let's duplicate it before we edit the image. Okay, so I'm gonna move it out of the way. Okay, so these two, I'm going to, well, how come it didn't let me slice? Oh, cause it already sliced. I didn't undo it enough. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so it already sliced for us. So this is my outer layer. What I want though is, uh, let's see. Let's grab these two items and weld it. This is gonna go, I'm gonna change the color just so that we can see it, okay? I'm gonna change it to this color. So what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna send that to the front so you can see. So this layer goes on top. This layer right here is our acetate, so the clear paper. So that's our acetate paper. And then what you want is you want five layers of this because it's going to go. Oh, no, you don't want five layers of that. I'm all over the place. I'm sorry. This is the acetate. You want two layers, okay? You want the bottom layer and then the top layer. In the middle, you're going to have these. You're going to have five layers of this, okay? So stick with me. This is what we're going to do. So think of this as our bottom layer of the acetate. So it's a full cloud. It's clear paper, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to glue or tape this on, okay? So in the middle right now, you're creating this space, okay? Then you put this layer on. This is our second layer. Then our third layer. Then our fourth layer, then our fifth layer. Okay, so that's our fifth layer. And then hold on, we're gonna duplicate this. Okay, so that's our fifth layer. So now what you have is you basically have a clear sheet on, on the bottom and you have five layers, right? So you can actually now pour the sequins into here and it will hold it because there's five layers of the outer. Then you have this top layer of acetate paper that's clear, right? It's going to go on top and you're going to seal it. So now you have your shaker. The sequins are inside. Then you have this top layer that you're going to put on top. And that will be, in our case, it's the glitter paper. So I hope that makes sense. So this is the glitter cardstock the five layers of the thin thing, and then the acetate paper on top and bottom so that you can put sequins inside and it will bounce or move. Okay, so that's one side. You're gonna do the same thing on this side. So on this side, let's grab these two. So this is, I know it's multi-steps and I'm sorry that I'm all over the place. This one, is here okay so you have your outer your offset your bigger offset so in my case I did this a light blue so let's do light blue so it looks like the sky and then I did this background layer as white and I'll bring it up in a second so you can see it okay then we'll move all of these over now originally I did cut out I thought this blue layer, I thought it would look good if it had another glitter color. So I did uh, silver because I didn't want it to distract from the rainbow, but it ended up just getting washed out. So I did this blue instead. Okay, so then you have that. Then you have your shaker clouds. And then we're going to create the same shaker clouds on this side, okay? Okay, so these two, we want to align center because that way the computer does it for you. It's perfectly uh, centered. And then we're gonna slice because that's how you're gonna get your layers, right? So here's the bottom. Okay, so let's start moving these out of the way. Okay, so this is our top and bottom. 
uh, actually top and middle layers, right? This is our acetate. So our acetate, I made blue, right? Just to be consistent with this other side. So here's our acetate layer. We need two of those. Okay, so we're building this just so that you, I know I'm repeating, but hopefully I'll get to you. Okay, so this is our bottom layer of acetate paper, okay? You're gonna glue this on top. This is our first layer, our second layer, third, fourth, fifth, and then we need a top one afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna grab all these right here and I'm gonna center it. So what you have is the bottom acetate, five layers of this ring. So now it gives you a little bit of depth to pour the sequins in, right? Then you're gonna put this on top. That's your final acetate layer. Then you're gonna put this beautiful color on top, this silver uh, cloud. And so now you have your shaker, okay? So this is shaker over here. Okay, and then let's grab, so all of this is just extra stuff that we can now delete. Okay, so I'm gonna grab all of this and delete it. Okay, so now we have our rainbow. I'm gonna move this side by side. You can put that five anywhere. You would have created the offset in ink space. Yes. <laughs> then now for, um, you would do the same thing for the name. You would bring it into Inkscape. So again, the fonts that you pick in Design Space, you can't create an offset for those because they're in Design Space. So what you, so that's why I like having another source to get my to get my um, fonts. But creating the offset, we already know how to do. So you need to have it in here. So I'm going to go to Images and I'm going to grab a banner. The banner. I do have in here. So I love this one banner, this one. So it's free with access. So insert that image. And what I like about this banner is it gives you layers, okay? And I, and I, and it works because I'm gonna put it here and make it bigger. You can distort this shape by clicking on um, unlock and see while the length, we don't wanna go past our rainbow, you can make it thicker to add however you want your name. See, and you can put the banner here or you can put it down here. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna change it up a little bit because what I didn't like was I think the banner is too separated from here. I think I would want the name more up here. Um, okay, so we're gonna duplicate this banner. This is our top layer and I did do it in blue. So I'm gonna change the blue. Okay, this layer, I'm gonna contour, hide all, cause I want it to be one full piece of paper. So this is gonna come out um, as one big thing. This is gonna sit on top. So, and to create stability for your rainbow cake topper, what you wanna do is, oops, let me undo that. We have our top layer, right? So this green layer and hit your shift key and this white rainbow in the back, we're gonna weld it. So this is what, this is what your back looks like. So it's all connected. It will give you, you can build and it's not, your cake topper is not gonna be flimsy. Okay, so you wanna weld it cause your stick's gonna go in the back, okay? And then this is our, hold on. It is our most back layer, okay? Everything else will sit on top of it. All right, then you have this on top, right? And then you can put your name in. That's all that there is, okay? So, um, I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna be doing a few more because I'm backlogged right now. I create, I always make them first so that I can show you during the video what it looks like when it's made because I think it's hard to visualize even though we have these colors. Yes, I can see what this looks like, but I think it's easier to see that and then to see the actual reality of what it looks like. So 
I have a few more to make. I hope that makes sense. Please stick with me. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please post them or your own projects that you need help. I am totally willing to create a video for your specific projects because I think it's hard to learn how to use design space um, with other people's projects. So if I can work on yours, then you know how to manipulate the file and you'll be better for it. And then you can watch other things that makes more that will make more sense even if it doesn't apply to you completely. I know I'm so wordy today. Sorry. All right. Bye guys.